Welcome to The Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert, the Chief Architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support experts in living well and doing good around the world, predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, all kinds of people from all different walks of life who are elevating others. And do we have an expert here for you today, Amit Ambagonkar. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thank you, James. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I know you came from India. That's and we have right. a mutual love for India because I've spent quite a few years there and in Mumbai, also wow. from where you're from. So maybe start the journey there. Tell us a little bit about you know, your childhood and then making your way over to Canada. Sure, sure. Uh, I had a very, very happy childhood. You know, yeah. my parents uh, growing up with an elder sister, it was really an amazing experience Good. throughout my life. And uh, when, I, when I grew up in, uh, in my profession, I was into healthcare back home in India. Yeah. And it somehow kept on, you know, appealing to me that I need to do more in life. Okay. And uh, that's when this opportunity came across to come to Canada. I said, that's it, you know, let me go for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm here. Now, did you come on your own? Did you come with your family? I came with my wife. With your wife, yes. okay. Yeah, and you have kids now? Yes, I have two kids. Okay, very good, how old are they? Uh, my boy is seven and yeah. the girl is 13. Very good, very good. Yeah. That's cool, that's cool. Thank you. And is it uh, something that you do in regards to coming back to India? Like do you travel back and forth, back and forth, or do you just now that you're in Canada, you've stayed? No, I do go back. I do yeah. have family back home. So yeah. I, you know, a couple of years, every couple of years I'm back home in India again. Very good, very yeah. good. So let's talk a little bit about Canada. You know, what's been the best so far for you in Canada? The people. The people? The people, yes. Okay, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> very interesting, very, very nice people that I've associated with, the, the friends and business partners that I have in my network now, really phenomenal. I love it, I love yes, it. Yes, thank and, you. And what, what would be the big comparisons in, in business, let's say? Because I know, like, I've done some business in India myself. Right. You know, what would you say is the biggest uh, comparison from business to India to Canada? Uh, I guess the processes are so different in these two countries because mm -hmm. when I was doing my business in India and when I came here, started my entrepreneur journey in Canada, uh, the processes were so different in terms of how things work uh, from the technical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, also because you know, the model here in, in North America is all franchise based. Yes. So there is a lot of uh, branding and upbranding that you need to do you know, in North America. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was one of the major difference that I found in, in doing business in these two countries. Is entrepreneurship strong in India? It's getting very strong now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I guess with the emergence of technology and the internet and people can kind of learn what they want to learn now. Absolutely. You know, we learn very differently than we did even a few decades ago. Yes, yes, right? absolutely. So it's evolving and quickly. Correct. And it's also access to knowledge. Yes. And now with the internet growing so fast, when I talk to my uh, you know, business partners back home in India or are my cousins, they are almost at the same knowledge level that I am here sitting in Canada. Yeah, Which amazing. is phenomenal now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can learn it like hyper oh, speed. Absolutely. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now I know you're big on family and uh, do you get your kids involved at all with what you're doing? Like how do you work with them in regards to evolving as a young business person? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I love my kids and I, I try to get them at almost all the events that I attend myself. 
And the reason being, I want them to see what I'm doing. I want them to see what my wife Swapna is doing and what we are doing as a family. Yeah. Because what I find is if I have my goals and dreams aligned with, with all four of us, mm -hmm. then it works like magic. It does. If, uh, if I'm working all alone by myself and the kids and the wife doesn't know what's happening with me, what's where I'm taking the family, then it's mm -hmm. kind of, there is a huge communication gap. Mm -hmm. So I try to bridge that. I try to take my kids to almost every event that I attend. No way. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> what kind of events? Tell us what kind of events well, you attend. Any, any business event, any mm -hmm. uh, networking event where there is a good, uh, Speaker. You know, a good speaker coming mm -hmm. in, a good professional development event that's happening. Mm -hmm. My kids are there with me. Who's your, let's say, top three favorite personal development gurus? Wow. Who, call them? who would you say? Who do you first, follow? Uh, first would be Jack Canfield. Okay, I Jack love Jack. Jack Canfield, yeah. I love this yeah. person. Amazing, amazing. Uh, one of my prominent coaches, Mr. Raymond Aaron. Okay, yeah. He's Raymond, made a yeah. huge impact in, yeah. in my life. And the other person that I closely follow is, is Tony Robbins. Oh, very good. Very good. That's awesome. Three really great choices. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> do you aspire to kind of be greatness like them one day? Yes, I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot of my coaching when I'm talking to entrepreneurs and coaches, that's, that's one of where these things are coming from. Because mm -hmm. I'm heavily involved in the in the business aspect of all these three mentors that I mentioned. Okay. Uh, so that's why my So you took their workshops, took their courses followed through with some part of the business. That's true, that's true, Very because cool. they have such huge successful models, mm -hmm. and I would love to learn from them, implement it myself, mm -hmm. see success, and mm -hmm. then duplicate it for my clients. The Amit system. That's right. One day. Yes. Right? Very good, very good. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of all three. You know, I do yeah. a lot of personal development myself. I'm actually at a stage in my life now where I'm focusing on purposeful development. Ah. So purposeful meaning, you know, really creating legacy. Once you've had the toys and you've done the trips and, you know, you've lived and walked in certain circles, there's a quest for more. That's you right. Know? Do you That's have right. a quest for more? What does the legacy look like for you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I. I think about that a lot and um, it, it always evolves mm -hmm. because it, this I is do, true. This is true. it always depends on where I am in life and I can only see a certain distance mm -hmm. so that's where my vision is. But this once is I kind too. of reach there then I said oh there's more to this mm -hmm. let's, let's go one step ahead and mm -hmm. then it just keeps expanding. Mm -hmm. Like 10 years ago my vision was so limited mm -hmm. it, was, it was restricted by my limiting beliefs. Yes. Right. But once I reach the next level, it's like, oh my God, there's so much more to life, so much mm -hmm. more that I can offer, and that's just that's just phenomenal. It just keeps expanding. Now, does your wife work with you, and does she share a common vision? Oh, absolutely. She yeah. is also uh, she's a trainer with Jack Canfield. Oh, that's great. Yeah, she's a certified trainer. Okay. So we work our business together. So you understand each other. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it makes yeah. a big difference. <laughs> very good. Very good. well. The children are very fortunate. You know, a lot of people that are privileged to. Uh, encountered the personal development industry at a young age, I find they have an advantage. You know, right. a lot of the kids that are going through, you know, regular schooling, nine through twelve, even college or university, etc. A lot of the teachers, they, they're, they're, they're not as evolved as some of these personal development people that we all have access to nowadays and they're on our smartphones and they're on our computer screens and we have access to all these individuals all the time. Are you going to put your children in touch with some of these personal development gurus outside of yourself and oh, your yes, wife? Oh yes, absolutely because I, I've already seen the, the influence that these gurus have had on my children. Like for example, my daughter yeah. Sanjana, she has written a book Okay. She is a published author at the age 12. Oh, wow. So she wrote a book called With The Art Raymond's of, Book Company? That's correct. Oh, very that's good, correct. very good, yeah. So the name of her book is The Art of Appreciation. Oh, I love it. And The it's Art of Appreciation. The Art of Appreciation. I always appreciation. share with my children, uh, appreciate appreciation versus expectation. Mm. Right, appreciation versus expectations. Expectations, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, it's just the taking her to these events and associating mm -hmm. with these successful people uh, that's just brought this change in her mm -hmm. that she was inspired to write her own book. I love it. Now, when yeah. we talk about transformational coaching, yes. okay, so uh, you're coined as a, a business transformation coach. That's Does right. that also involve spirituality, health, well-being? Is it all encompassing? It does because what I believed is, uh, to be honest with you, when I started uh, my business coaching career, I started with the technical aspects of it mm -hmm. because I thought that's what entrepreneurs needed the most. Yeah. Like, you know, like if you talk about online marketing piece, then how do you do the online marketing? Mm -hmm. What's social media and all that? So the steps. The steps. Yeah. But when I started taking these workshops, when I started to talk to entrepreneurs at that level, I found that they are still lost. 
they're yeah. still lost. And what I found out through my through my coaching is they needed much more information mm -hmm. regarding themselves more than their business. Yes, I would and agree. And then that's when I started to talk about your life purpose. Yes. Right. What's what? Why are you doing the business that yeah. you're doing? Right. Yeah. What's the end goal? Ten years from now, where do you see yourself? Mm -hmm. And from there, let's backtrack it now yeah. so that we can plan. Okay, this is what you need to do now so mm -hmm. that you get the results after Reverse ten years. Reverse engineering. Reverse engineering. That's I the secret. It. If you were to maybe share with our audience, maybe two, three nuggets of wisdom for those entrepreneurs out there that are looking to find a business coach like yourself. What do they look for? Well, first thing I would recommend is uh, is definitely look for a good coach because I have myself done seven businesses before I got into this business and became successful. And the entire credit of my success goes to my coaches. And I wish I knew about this business coaching aspect uh, before I did these seven businesses. I wouldn't have had seven businesses <laughs> failed. <laughs> That's it. And uh, the, just the access to the coaching, what they did, because they see something that I didn't in my own business. I love it. Right? So just uh, making that huge difference changed my business, changed my life, and that's why I'm here where I am. Now we got about 30 seconds, and I wanted to check out your book. I know you have a, a, yes. a book there. That's right. Yeah, what is the book called? So the book is Your Profound Success. Yeah. It's seven powerful ways to skyrocket your business using the internet. Very cool. Very and cool. it's a co-authored book. I've written this book uh, with Raymond Aaron. Oh, very nice. Who's the New York Times yeah. best-selling author. That's beautiful. Yes. I love it. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Here's Raymond right there. Very cool. <laughs> and this one right here? Yes, that's a report actually that I wanted to give out to the listeners. Because yeah, please let us know how they can get it. Excellent. So one of the most important things that I help entrepreneurs do is build credibility. And I have written an excellent report about how you can build credibility in the next 60 days or less. And that's what I want to share with you. So all what you need to do is just go to yourprofoundsolutions.com slash TV. Yourprofoundsolutions.tv, uh, sorry, yourprofoundsolutions.com slash TV. And that's where you'll find this report. So it's a, it's a great 20-page uh, report where you can start building your credibility and start becoming an industry expert for your own field. I love it. Amit, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. Thank you, James. Thank you Stay so much. Stay tuned. We will be back right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur. And we are going to keep things going with another great expert, Julian Ignatuk. Hello, good day. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you, my friend. Absolutely. Now, I know you had come from Ukraine, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have many friends from Ukraine, and my past assistant was actually from Ukraine. So it's I have excellent. A special love for Ukraine. So tell us a little bit about the journey here to Canada. Sure. Uh, well, I came to Canada around uh, 2000. Okay. With my parents. Okay. Uh, we immigrated here. Yeah. Uh, it's not, not one of those things we're planning. Okay. It's uh, something they sort of filled out an application and thought, well, maybe it's a possibility. They forgot about it. Okay. And one day it came in the mail and, what is this? It's like, yes. oh, welcome. You can apply to Canada now. Oh, I'm like, nice. really? Okay. Yeah. And there's big discussions going on, and mm -hmm. we're, we're doing okay in Ukraine, but mm -hmm. we just thought, well, okay, well, maybe let's try. There's better, better education for me. Yes. And that's, that was the main driving factor okay, for cool. taking this leap. Yeah. Um, it was a huge leap, though. I bet. I bet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scary, too, I mean, especially for a young person at your age coming over. Yeah. It, you it, know? Yeah. So, so what, what would you say would be the big difference in, in like Canada and Ukraine for yourself? Uh, well, to me, it was huge. Yeah. First of all, I don't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, all my friends and close family were there. Yes. Uh, I was learning English, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I wasn't there there, mm -hmm. so it wasn't 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't sure what, what's going to happen, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, just, well, I wanted to travel, Yeah. <laughs> so I was up for traveling and seeing Canada, but the, the staying part is that, is, is that scared me. 
Now, did your parents do the same thing they did in Ukraine as they did here? Like, did they start business here? No. Um, my dad did have a business. Uh, he did engineering there. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he came here, he found it really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so he found a businessman who he worked for. But he did, you know, he was digging stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, he got, he became an electrician. Mm -hmm. You know, he works for the union. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it was very tough. He did, like, renovations as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a very tough road, so com completely different. So mm -hmm. My mom as well, she was a teacher, mm -hmm. teaching geography. Mm -hmm. uh, she still does a Ukrainian Saturday school. Mm -hmm. However, regular, she's a dental assistant. Mm -hmm. So that's where she found her passion. But she used to clean houses and do other things. But like all this. heroic, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> to do that for a son or a daughter, to really understand that there's a better education in other countries, you know, better opportunities for their children. You know, I'm sure you would do the same. I would. Yeah. Uh, there's still a lot of pressure on the kids, though. Yeah. I can tell you that from my experience. This is true. This because is true. at the same time as I'm studying, I know what they're doing. Yes. And I know what they were doing. Yes. And it just doesn't feel right. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, yeah. Now, I know you, uh, you got into business here. So let's talk about that. Okay. Now, I believe you went into the mortgage broker business, correct? Correct. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. How did you get involved? Uh, well, I love finance, yeah. so finance excites me okay. in all the different aspects, and I really like debt. Debt? Yeah. I don't hear that often. No? I really like debt. Well, <laughs> well, I'm a different type of guy, you know, I look at finance very differently. I look yeah. at people around the street and I see numbers, so, yeah. uh, so I thought, how do I get in there without working for a bank? What's a good way? And that's, mortgages is certainly a way to do that. This is true. Yeah. This is true. And now you're actively involved in that? Oh, I am. I am 100% there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having several projects we're looking into working with more closely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, there are projects that are dear to me as well mm -hmm. that are in the plans. Mm -hmm. uh, those are more so on the lines of providing affordable housing in the greater Toronto area. Amazing. Uh, so I really Very hope good. those projects mm -hmm. get through. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's the business part of it, mm -hmm. of course. You're going to make money, but at the same time... Social entrepreneurism. Correct. Right? Yeah. Social business, social enterprise, you know, making a living doing really good, you know, deeds, we'll call it, you know. Well, that's doesn't what, get any better than that. No, it doesn't. That's what motivates right. me. If I, yeah. if I were to complete these projects, that's real success for me. I love that's it. That's when I know I made it. Mm -hmm. When they're complete and I can go look at these buildings, see the people moving in, and see, you know, the sparks in their eyes and the difference being made. That's Any what I know. Any specific areas in Toronto that you guys are looking at? Because I know there's like 13 priority neighborhoods, yeah. you know, that are low-income. There's so low many, income. so many areas. Uh, we're talking about Durham region. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at uh, north, like new market areas. Mm -hmm. uh, Toronto too. Looked mm -hmm. at some places. It's all in the works for now. I can't really until we really figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but but there's a lot, a lot of areas of variables. being focused. Yeah, all yeah. Variables. Yeah. So where do you see yourself? Let's say in five years from now. Where's Yulene in five years? Well, uh, I'm working on a team, okay. and this team, ideally, will open their own brokerages, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really working hard to make sure we have the same culture of helping people, mm -hmm. uh, doing everything by the books, mm -hmm. and making sure that we change people's lives, and sometimes if there are better products, mm -hmm. just go ahead and refer people there, mm -hmm. even though you might not get anything for it, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, but... It, it's doing it, it with integrity. Absolutely, integrity yeah. is the main part of the business. So mm -hmm. I, I hope to train these guys mm -hmm. to become these people. It doesn't matter if they have no experience in finance. So they would be working for you, with you? With me, with, with me. Okay, I okay. don't believe in working for me. Yeah. I believe they're there to build their goals. Yep. Um, and I'd like to help them achieve them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, working together is essential to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're gonna bring their own experiences for things that I don't know. That's right. And then this will be the strength in terms of helping our clients achieve their goals because they mm -hmm. have they're coming to us with their goals. They're not there to get mortgages. Mm -hmm. It's just a way for them yes. uh, to complete their goals. <laughs> yeah, and to keep networking and connecting and growing together as a unit. Absolutely, probably a lot of synergies. You know, from your background, from their background, Very important. coming together, becoming a whole, stronger as a unit. That's cool. I know before we were uh, on air, we were talking a little bit about spirit animals. Why don't you share with the, <laughs> with the audience what your spirit animal is and why? Well, I actually did a bit of research on this one. Uh, I came up with two yeah. that really resonated with me as well. Uh, one of them is a butterfly. Okay. Uh, this one, apparently, 
uh, it really, it, when, when important changes happen in your life, yes. you can do it with grace and lightness. Yes. Uh, so that's the butterfly part of it. The other one is lion. Yes. Uh, well, lion's obviously fierce. Mm -hmm. It's un unwavering. Mm -hmm. So it goes straight for these challengers. It's a go-getter. Mm -hmm. uh, it has strength in it and personal power. I love it. And I felt like that really resonated with me. Mm -hmm. so. And if you had to pick a third one, just off the top <laughs> of your head, right now. I would go with a wolf. A wolf. I always thought I'm a wolf. I don't know. Like all my life, I looked at the moon and the full moon, yeah. and I felt a connection. Yeah. And I thought, well, maybe I'm a wolf. And I don't know the explanations it's just of this. It's in there somewhere, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, when I speak, I speak a lot to, to young kids, right? So between the ages of, you know, eight all the way up to like 14, 15 in schools. And one of the drills that I do with them is to help them figure out what spirit animal they are, right? So when I say to them, you're at the last day on earth and you're at the pearly gates of the universe, you're about to, you know, finish your last day, what is the first animal that comes to mind that resonates with you close to here on earth during your days here? So they'll say something really quick. I'll say, okay, well, that wasn't really it. Let's give you another go. Okay, that wasn't really it. Let's give you one more go. And then I explain to them what those are. So the first one that comes to your head, which is the butterfly, is how you present yourself to the world. Okay, graceful and just nice and change and light, etc. The second one is actually how people see you. Okay, the lion. All right, and the third one is what you actually are. <laughs> yeah, so okay. it's interesting we're having this conversation because I do it a lot in schools, and that's why I asked you for the third one. Hmm. Yeah. So what's the big why? Like at the end of the day, why why do you do what you do? Well, the main thing for me. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, is one of the things like the affordable housing part of it is being able to give back. Yeah. So, you know, once I'm able to do that, then mm -hmm. I feel like I made a difference. Mm -hmm. I'm part of Dominion Lending Centers and they're yep. amazing in terms yes. of what they do. Yeah. Uh, they're involved with programs such as Bikes for Kids. Yeah, that's right. Uh, which, you know, every Christmas they try to help out many kids across Canada. And they do. Absolutely. I, I like things like Terry Fox Run, mm -hmm. which is very dear to me every mm -hmm. September. There's a s several causes in terms of cancer. Mm -hmm. So they support cancer research and I encourage individuals and businesses to keep helping with this one. Yeah. It's really important. Uh, they're trying to cure cancer. Yes. Um, and, We're uh, all affected by it in one way or another, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I love innovation. I'm, yeah. I find myself an innovator. So if I'm okay. getting involved with projects, uh, they get, you know, that in, they're innovative, change people's lives, mm -hmm. uh, but as well as uh, maybe shake up the society a little bit in a mm -hmm. positive way. Yeah. Uh, those are the projects I like to be part I of. I love it. Even though well, a lot of projects start with, yeah. you know, great intentions, some may fail, but those that make it, yeah. uh, they're going to change lives. Game changer. All right, Yulian, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's an thank honor. You. And stay tuned with us. This is The Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert, and we will be back right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Erd, the chief architect of WOW from Dynamo Entrepreneur, a brand that supports experts and living well around the world, predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, all kinds of people lifting people up through their practices. However, sometimes we get a special guest, and do we have one here today? And they are lifting people up through their music. Alex Lejambe, Lucas Mullins of Break the Trend. Good to see you. Hello. Good to see you, my friend. Hey, how are you? I gotta say, you guys are just tearing it up, man. You got your new sound recording label, and just the, 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 the music is just evolving at such a great pace. Now, Thank before you. we get into the business side of the music, which I really want to focus on, because technically you guys are entrepreneurs, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the journey. You know, maybe, you know, where did you grow up? You know, where did it all start for you? Uh, it all started for me uh, in North Bay, actually, uh, growing up there, and uh, my dad was a musician. And um, I know that all the time they've, they were practicing downstairs in our basement. And uh, I remember apparently the one time, I was fairly young, I don't remember, but I, was, I actually was caught playing the drums uh. um, on my drummer's set, I, on his drummer's set, sorry. Okay. And uh, from that day forward, he actually built me a drum set out of like pots and pans and all that. And then eventually moved into like guitar, but actually just 
came back to drums because that was yeah, just my, that's your true love. Yeah, that was my that was the main thing really, but uh, definitely was uh, that's where I started out. Who's your favorite drummer? Favorite drummer? That's always a tough question for me because there's so just, many good ones. They're eh? all so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Travis. Personally, um, one that really I emulate most would be John Bonham. Personally, John, yeah, so yeah. I would say that that would be yeah. my the closest synergy. More, yeah, in my thing, my favorite way is a drummer actually out of a band called Paramore. It's called Zach Farrell. Yeah, he's been my my favorite drummer since I was fairly in mean, my teens. So right on. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and Lucas, care to share? Yeah, uh, I started. I grew up in Stainer, Ontario, small okay. little Stainer. town. Yeah, I was actually just there. <laughs> no way, yeah, right? Yeah, wow. uh, right by Collingwood, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That so. always shocks me when people say that. Yeah, um, actually, yeah. A, a friend of mine just married a, a girl from Stainer. So, oh, no so yeah, wow. believe it or not. Yeah, I they live in Collingwood her. now. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so. Wow. So, that's where I grew up, Stainer. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to guitar through, initially, when I was really young, my mom loved Garth Brooks. Nice. So, I loved Garth Brooks. Yeah. And she got me this little acoustic guitar. I used to put on shows on mm -hmm. the top of the stairs. I had a cowboy hat. Nice. To this one. I love cowboy Everything hats. repeats, eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm a big cowboy hat guy, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And that ended when my dad kind of smirked at me. I was playing, and I smashed the guitar in a temper tantrum. I was like three years old. And kind of came back to it later on when I discovered ACDC and got into yeah. rock music, that whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. So you got out of country and into rock at 12. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank God. Yes. <laughs> thank God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's amazing how country music's evolved, though. It's kind of like rock country, country rock, country it really, pop. It really know. has. It, a lot of roots start in country. A lot of people start there. You yeah, know, and absolutely. And they kind of evolve in one way or another. And I, how I, would you guys classify yourself as a band, genre-wise? Rock and roll. Just straight up rock, rock and roll is what we go with. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. And how did you guys actually meet? Because I know there's two other bandmates, correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, I met Alex in our, we both took radio broadcasting, and I went to North Bay, yeah. uh, Canada College up there. And we got assigned this project to interview classmates. And it wasn't even like we got to pick, we were assigned, and we yeah. were assigned to each other. Okay. So, and the process of interviewing each other learned, mm -hmm. like, he's like, hey, man, I, like, I play in a band, and I'm like, oh, I play lead guitar, and it just kind of carried oh. on. Yeah, it started from there, yeah. The divine <laughs> intervention. Yeah. Yeah, basically. It feels that way, yeah. Yeah, you should read those interviews, though. They're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Dig those up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right on, right on. So then, did you guys, like, get any classical training at all, or? Uh, with drumming, uh, not at all. I mean, I had a couple people teach me some things here and there, but most everything that I know is self-taught. Okay. So uh, besides uh, going into music class uh, in high school, which was all purely saxophone, yeah. but that's where my theory knowledge comes in, which is still, you don't really use it when you use rock and roll. So I mean, it's a little rusty, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no math. It's all yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all in the field, yeah. so you kind of got to... Anyway, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But and you any classical training? I had about six months of rock guitar lessons, just rock kind guitar. of being okay. taught the chords and like, yeah, not much theory. When we started diving into theory, that's when, yeah, yeah, yeah. not for that reason, but what I bands are guys uh, inspired by these days? These days, pretty mutual within our band right now is actually Billy Talent. Yeah. That's a huge one. We're yeah, all, yeah. I've Saga always bands. loved them and I've just forced it down their throats. And but I've always in a good, yeah, so too, is he. Yeah. But they're you, good Canadian group, man. Okay. Exactly, yeah. 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 They're they're a huge probably the biggest one on us right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and the Glorious Sons. Yeah. The yeah. Glorious Sons have been huge, like personally. they they're just capturing that genuine yeah, yeah. Mood yeah, raw. Of music. Yeah. And yeah. like their lyrics are very visual and it's it's and like it's it's refreshing mm -hmm. to yeah. see that come back. So. And when you guys write, you guys just kind of come together and you just jam or you just like you have an idea and then you kinda roll on it and say, Hey guys, I got this idea. A little bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Really, yeah. Like sometimes we get, you know, a member that comes in with a song and then we all just dissect it and throw ideas until it actually becomes, you know, what cohesive. It is. Exactly. Yeah. Or we just yep. jam it out. Yeah, sometimes it's it's really a fluid process. It just mm -hmm. it happens the way it happens. And that's a big thing we've had kind of learned throughout mm -hmm. our time writing music mm -hmm. is you have to let it happen, you can't force it. So how did you let Break the Trend happen? Like, where did Break the Trend come from? Where's the name yeah. from? So Break the Trend actually comes from um, me and the lead singer, John. Uh, we were in the same high school. And actually, we played in a band beforehand together, and we broke up. 
Mm -hmm. uh, then he actually, like, because he was just the lead guitar player at the beginning, and he just started singing randomly, and I started hearing these songs that he was recording. So right then and there, I knew, like, I had to do something with him. We had to yeah. do something together. So it all came together, actually, in, like, our cafeteria uh, in, uh, at our high school. That's where we would meet every every lunch and just get our guitars and start writing and doing that. And the name actually came to be at a party that of one of my ex-girlfriends actually. <laughs> and uh, we were just discussing it and we really wanted it to be something different, something unique because... It, something trendy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but like, we wanted to break the trend of the mainstream music, of business and music. I mean, yeah. business has a part to do with it, but music is inherently art, obviously. So yes. it has to be genuine yes. and business cannot be a part of that so that's what we believe and that's where break the trend comes to because it's something we're trying to break is the trend the trend of mainstream music and, and where do you guys see yourselves like in 10 years what's the picture perfect visual personally i hope we're playing at the rock and ring festival in germany Ah, rock, rock <laughs> yeah, that's my yeah. favorite one, favorite yeah, one I'd say. Yeah, they got some serious bands there every exactly. year, year after yeah. year after that's year. That's just me, though. Well, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. going to put a limit on that, right? That's, I want to go wherever this takes you. Wherever it takes you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, a band is like a marriage, right? I mean, like sticking together for those many years that <laughs> a lot of these bands do, that, that in itself <laughs> is an art form, you know? Oh, is I mean, it ever? I mean, what does it take to, to really tolerate each other, oh, you know? What that took. Hmm. Yeah. I took a lot at the beginning <laughs> because we started live. We moved to Peterborough, yeah, and we started living with each other, and we've never done that before. I mean, I was always at his place, yeah, but it just wasn't the same. So <laughs> it now, changes, yeah. Yeah, we're basically husband and wife now. <laughs> That's the running joke. And you wear yeah. the cowboy hat in the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but all, like it's it's weird. Like we have a weird dynamic where we're all just like each other's parents so it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a strange thing being in a band really. <laughs> it, really it is yeah. it takes a lot man yeah. yep. you know yeah, and there's a lot of sacrifice bands. you know and especially show. when the paychecks start coming the bigger projects start coming the videos start coming yep. the gigs that are traveling start coming exactly you yep. know i mean have you guys done any of that yet with the with the traveling back and forth across canada maybe or yeah, we've done across Ontario. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ontario. Ontario. Yeah. Ontario. Yeah. 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 In the O'Connell line crush. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, but um, and that that was such an experience in itself, yeah. traveling around, and we we were lucky that we played close enough where like we stayed at his dad's, we stayed at my dad's, we kind of found friends along the way, stayed there. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't ever had to sleep in the van, which was great. That's yeah. good. Yeah, we managed to avoid that somehow. That's good. So. <laughs> yeah. Most memorable music experience? Oh, playing at the Horseshoe. Playing at the in Horseshoe London. Tavern. London, Ontario. No, in Toronto. Greg? Oh, the Horseshoe in Toronto, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. yeah what's the one in London? It's a, uh, oh, what is it called? Call the Office. Oh, Call the office, office, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah we played there too. Yeah. That's a great little pub. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. there a few times. That yeah, was, yeah, I was yeah. actually on Ontario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you? There, yeah, yeah. What's the most memorable experience? Uh, last year we played um, a, f a show at what was called the Road to Warp Tour. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's a, such a story because our bassist that was playing with us, he broke his arm right before the show. Ah. So we had to get a fill-in to yeah. come in and help us. Yeah. And the fill-in guy had a gig in Peterborough. Yeah. And we were at this show, and it ended up being he was on the way there. He yeah. was outside trying to get him. And this is all run very tight, very yeah. tight schedule. Yeah, yeah. Me and John are on stage in our allotted time, and oh, no. the other half of our band is not on stage. Oh, and then no. all of a sudden, the gear flies up, and then we go. We just started playing. Like, it, yeah, yeah, we did it. And it was just... Speaking Easily, of a lot yeah. of time, we're going to take a short commercial break, and we'll be right back. We are going to talk about the business of music. Perfect. Yeah. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Back. I am James Erd of the Dynamo Show, and I am sitting here with Alex Lejam and Lucas Mullins of Break the Trend. 
Now, I know you guys have just recently signed with SoundDrive, so congratulations to you guys. Hey, thank you. That's absolutely awesome. I know musicians like to focus on music, and that's why they bring on board different players, you know, mm -hmm. businesses to help with the business side of things. What would you say has been the biggest advantage to joining, you know, forces with a group like SoundDrive? Well, our uh, full-length album is basically evidence of that, definitely, because without them, we wouldn't have had the chance to record a full-length album beforehand. We'd only done a three-song EP, because that's all, like, it's a lot of money to record. Yeah, it's, it is. It's a lot, so mm -hmm. having them really helped us uh, achieve that next step of having a full-length and actually having more content uh, than we previously had, because once we record, uh, we record a song called Hey Darlin', it was the only one we had recorded, and we sent it out to mm -hmm. everybody, and they, and they asked what else we had. Mm -hmm. We didn't, we only had yeah. the one song, so I was like, okay, now we know what to do next time, and now we have seven songs, so it's awesome. like, all right, let's do that. Yeah, what's your favorite song on the album, Alex? Oh, I would say Machine. I mean, yeah. uh, not to be <laughs> not to be selfish. Yeah. That's like the one song that I wrote, so it is. It's selfish. Yeah. Of course, it's. <laughs> selfish. Come on. Yeah. I love it. it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, what's your favorite song on the album? <laughs> the one I wrote called yeah. Stratosphere. <laughs> it's because they're the most personal too. You know, they, yeah. the, it's, it's the deepest. One. Yeah. 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 Oh, Mine's deeper than yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so, like, when you actually join forces with a company like this, a record production label, etc., you know, it, I mean, beyond just recording, you know, there's a lot of other avenues and a lot of other elements, a lot of other variables yep. in the music industry. There's booking shows, you know, there's going out and, you know, finding the, the tour, the, 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 what do you call it, the Ontario? Ontario, Ontario yeah. you yes. know, to, to find the different destinations, yeah. organizing all that. Do you guys play a role in that? Do they play a role in that? Like, how do you guys, yeah, you know, it's, figure uh, out who does what? A big a team effort. I mean, yeah. we'll go and book shows of our own, and then they'll come to us and be like, hey, mm -hmm. guys, we've got this coming out. Like, we offered this. Uh, like, the Road to Warp Tour was yeah. all sound drive. They hooked us up with that, which is my favorite experience to date, right? That's so, awesome. Like, yeah, and they've helped a ton with that. And it's just, it's nice to have, to be able to share the load of the behind the scenes stuff. It allows us to kind of keep it with the music a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and knowing that, and the fans, the exactly. The social yep. interactions. Yeah. Yeah. Are Absolutely. you guys big on social media? Like, do you guys focus on social media? You have to be huge. You have yeah. to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the yeah. world. That's, yeah. that's the way of the world nowadays. You yeah. really it is, have yeah. To yeah. Be on point with your social media game and, and music usually. videos are you guys doing any sort of videos or even like you know off the cuff stuff like yeah. on social media social media yep are you guys doing that kind of stuff tons of it yeah, yeah. we uh we just recently had a friend of mine film one of our shows oh cool clips from every song so we could post that online mm -hmm. we'll do little acoustic covers mm -hmm. of either our own songs or other songs we just mm -hmm. did one of our single fight your reality mm -hmm. an acoustic version it did mm -hmm. pretty well we were pretty happy with the turnout uh, mm -hmm. for that, as well as our own music videos that SoundDrive has helped us film as mm -hmm. well, which were for the singles Fight Your Reality as well as Stratosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also have a video, spoiler alert, of me shooting him in the face with a Nerf gun. So that's uh -huh. yeah, that's, good. that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. the little stuff that you need, right? That's yeah. some humor, that's yeah. Slow motion. So. I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, what about stuff like you know, like the YouTube? Uh, you know, SoundCloud, stuff like that, where stuff's getting uploaded, sometimes legally, sometimes illegally, <laughs> et cetera. You know, does that spoil stuff for bands? Is it better for bands nowadays, you know, that with all the file sharing going on and stuff? I don't think it's better. Mm. I think it it's hurting the music industry in that no one can sell records anymore. Unless whole, you're yeah. Adele or Taylor Swift, you're not making much money off record sales. Even yeah. bands like Metallica, if yeah. you notice Metallica, has to tour every year. People are listening on YouTube. Exactly. Of all places. It, you just yeah. don't get you don't get paid the same way for those types of things that you used to. That mm -hmm. being said, as a band and as someone in a business, you have to be aware of that and use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. You cannot ignore it. You can't be like, oh, you know, streaming well sucks. We're gonna not. No, mm -hmm. that's not an option. You have to pay attention to it, you have to be ahead of the game yeah. with it as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what do you guys do to take on that challenge? Are there any techniques? Are there any things that you can share as a, a, an experienced band with some of the newcomers that are coming into the industry that are terrified of that stuff? Don't, don't be afraid of it. Learn it, study mm -hmm. it, see how to get, and a huge thing, like Spotify is the one that I really mm -hmm. am a believer in because 
I, I shouldn't say a believer in because once again, the artists aren't getting paid the way I, as an artist, I think they should. Yeah. But you have to be aware of it. And there's ways to use Spotify to your advantage. You get your music on playlists on there. Same thing with YouTube. Yep. It's very critical these days to try and get your songs on playlists on these streaming sites. Okay. Huge, okay. huge. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't necessarily encourage pirating. It's not something that I do personally, mm -hmm. but I've noticed that if people are gonna steal your music, do it, because a lot of the times, they will become a fan. A fan. Exactly. And yeah, with they're that gonna hear fan, one song, and yeah. they're gonna lead to two, lead to seven. Yeah. Then I would rather, yeah. Just, you have a customer yeah. after that. You got somebody who wants more, mm -hmm. and then they'll start buying your merchandise. They'll start buying your mm -hmm. CDs. If they really support you, they will. Yep. They're just, people have, are, choose you with their money. Obviously, the markets are huge nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's insane to, you really need to test it before you buy it. And when you say markets are huge, you do now have a global audience. You yes, know, back absolutely. in the day, even 20, 30, 40 years yep. ago, you know, it was very different. You mm -hmm. know, you, you were just doing more local stuff. Now you have access to the world. So yep. the right person at the right place at the right time may hear something, you know, exactly, yeah. in Colombia, and all of a sudden you guys are down there. Yep. You know, who knows? Or, or Rock'em yeah. Ring, you know? And yeah. You, you, you <laughs> never know where you guys are going to end <laughs> exactly. up. Exactly. You know? Yep. Any uh, personal development uh, gurus that you guys follow? Are you guys into any, you know, mm. inspirational speakers? Because that's kind of my world, and it always okay. fascinates me. It's always a question that I like to ask people, yeah. you know, whether they're like spiritual gurus or, or personal development gurus. Do you guys follow anybody? Personally, I listen to a lot of musicians being interviewed where they talk about these things. That's yeah. me. I, uh, Dave Grohl did a keynote speech. I believe it was yes. in 2015 mm -hmm. at uh, South by Southwest Festival. And he talks about the business and how Dave Grohl, he's the biggest rock star on the planet. Mm -hmm. He talks about how did he get there. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just on his music. He was smart about it. He did yeah, things properly. And I, I really he, like he that He read one. his contracts. Exactly, Definitely. exactly. And he, he was yeah. lucky that he had Nirvana first to go through that. And then yeah. when it came to his second band, the Foo Fighters, he could be yeah. like, okay, well, I got screwed over here. Yeah. How do I not this time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And even having gone through, you know, with what he went through with Nirvana exactly. and the loss of Kurt and you know, stuff like that. So we've yep. lost so many musicians as of late. It's just crazy <laughs> yeah. what's going on. It's, it's just terrible. Yeah. Mind boggling. So what's next for you guys? What's, what's the next big step? Our CD release, actually, that's our next big step. And after that, we. <laughs> Who no knows? Problems. Yeah, really. yeah. We, we just, the limit. Yeah, yeah, it's basically we just we really want to get everything done right. Yep. Uh, it's just a step by step. There's lots of steps to follow, and they have to be done perfectly in order. Put in the work. Exactly. We yep. gotta grind it, and that's just it, really. Do you yeah. guys give back at all? Or is there any charities that are close and dear to either of your hearts? Not yet, but one day I really, really want to give back. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hard. I don't want to say we're starving artists, but I mean, you want somebody to give back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Absolutely, it. yeah. Once we get to that level, definitely something that is. No. Well, I mean, we have played a few charity gigs. Actually, we played uh, the the Brain Injury Society of Brain Toronto uh, Society last of December, Toronto. which was Dom and Francesco of Sound Drive got us on that. Awesome, awesome. Um, awesome. We also last summer had the opportunity to play um, the Tragically Hip's last show. We got to open for that, which oh, oh, oh. not necessarily raised, charity, nice. but yeah. the amount of money, they actually did raise money, yeah, raised, raised money and donated it to his charity. Yeah, I love it. Guys, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Okay, we will. See you guys on stage. Perfect. All right. This is the Dynamo Show. I am James Zert. This is Break the Trend, and we will see you on the next episode.